All right. So hope you have got the idea of how that this whole operations are working to connect our test code to connect to this particular product APIs database or the applications database so that we can access the data from it. So for doing that, we actually created a connection string. We use the database context or the product DB context to connect to this particular database using the SQLite database. And we also use the repository pattern added as a dependency injection within our service collection container so that we can use it within our step definition to perform all the different operation of CRUD operation from our application. So we have all this infrastructure ready. But we have got some problem where the connection string is going to be a problem because it is not product DB sitting under our uh, EA spec flow test project folder. We have to connect to the product DB of our product API. So how do we do that? Well, in order to do that, we are going to be first writing a bit of code which is going to tell essentially that we need to connect to this particular directory. So for doing that, I'm really not going to write the code this time, but I'm just going to copy paste some of the code that I have already written. So basically the code is going to look something like this. So what this code is basically doing is it's going to get the project bin path. So that is a basically uh, the uh, folder or maybe it's not the project bin path. It is basically the project um, uh, DB path, something like that. So we are going to get the project DB path uh, where we are going to get the app domain, the current domain dot base directory. And then we are going to see if it is a directory, if it is a directory, then get the full name and also check if it contains the solution in that. So if there is a solution file, which is going to be the, the project uh, product API dot SLN, if you have that, then return the parent of the particular directory and then combine the directory name with the project name so that you always get the, uh, the directory for us. So that's what this code is basically doing. And I also have written a directory contains method which is going to do all these operation of getting the files out from it. It is very straightforward code. Basically, you can easily write this code to get the project DB path. So I'm going to use this uh, method over here to get the project DB itself. So basically what I mean about that is if I just go over here and I'm going to say var uh, the, the DB path, something like that is equal to, I'm going to say get project DB path and I'm going to give the project name here. And the project name is nothing but the product API. So this is the easy, nice little trick that I have did to get the path of the product API. I can use this name over here and now I can use this as the path to the product DB. So for doing that, I'm going to use a string interpolation. I'm going to use a dollar there and I'm going to put the DB path, something like this. And I'm going to put a slash there. So this way it is going to get to this particular path and it's going to get the product DB for me. Hopefully you got the idea of how the, the path is going to look like. So if I just put a break point here and if I just go and try to uh, debug this particular project, so you see that it comes over here, get project DB path. And if I just step over, you see that the project path is going to be E colon source playwright uh, CICD the report of product API. And if I just navigate over here, the connection string will now be E colon source playwright CICD the report and then product API slash product DB. So now this path is the one that I needed for uh, my product db to be located so now hopefully this particular path will be correct so if i just go over here if i'm just going to copy this path and go to my uh, windows explorer maybe just new tab paste this guy something like this see, see that we have got the product uh, db over here so we could be able to find it correctly so that is working fine so now the path is correct and we can use this DB context to perform the operation, which is all cool. So that's working. And finally, we need to see how we can use our repository pattern to query the data or get the data out of it. 
So for doing that, I'm going to go to our reusable step over here. And you always know that while we use dependency injection, we need to use this repository pattern. So I'm going to use the I product uh, repository or the product repository, something like that. I'm going to use product repository and I'm going to hit control dot. I'm going to assign a field, which is going to be underscore product repository. So I'm just going to give it a name as underscore product repository. I can use this product repository over here to delete the data. So we have got the connection of the DB done, which is great. And now deleting the data from the database. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to copy paste the product repository over here. And once I hit dot, you get all the methods which is defined within our product repository, within our test application, which is this one. You see that we have got the method like add product, delete the product, get product, update product, get product by ID, and delete the product by name. This is the method that they need to delete the product. You remember earlier, we used the delete async method to delete the product by name like this. We pass the product name. I'm going to use the exact same operation, but not with the API this time. Rather, I'm going to use the database to perform that operation. Look at that. It's so good. And you're done. It is going to delete the data for you every single time. And finally, I also need to ensure that I remove the async of task because you know that this is not an async operation that I'm trying to do. So I'm going to get rid of that over here. And I'm going to just make this as void type. Uh, so that's all that change we need to do. Uh, and finally, we need to run the uh, test over here. And before I run the test, I also need to ensure that the application is also running as well, because at the moment, like this application is currently not running. So if I run the application in Visual Studio, something like this, you will notice that I can't run the test. So basically it runs the applications for us over here and here. But now if I go to Visual Studio uh, and if I try to run the test, uh, I can't run the test over here, right? So that's something I can't do it. So in order to avoid this particular problem, I'm going to go to my Windows terminal over here and I'm going to run the application from the terminal. So I'm going to go to the playwrights application over here. I'm going to do a dot net run that will run the web application for me. Uh, and then I'm going to go to the uh, playwright CI CD and I'm going to say product API and this I'm going to do a dot net run and that way it's going to run the product API for me as well. So both the uh, web app and the API app are running at the moment. So if I just go to the local host of 8000, you can see that my application is accessible over here, right? And now if I just go to my test code, which is my backflow test code over here, I'm saying that given I ensure the headphone data is cleaned up if already exist, right? So at the moment, uh, what we have did is we don't really have an headphone over here. Uh, but we just have uh, some other data, for example, let's say cabinet or maybe speaker, we just add it, right? So I'm going to just say speakers, I'm just trying to see if that can be done. Uh, and the speaker value is going to be world class speaker. So I'm just going to ensure that I add that description as well. And it's 600, uh, which is all cool. Awesome. So I'm going to save this code and let me try to run the test and see if that works or not. So when I do that, you will notice that it is going to start running the application for me. It's going to create the product, which is the speaker, and then it's going to close the test for me. Uh, so if I just go over here, you see that the speaker, the ID is four. If I refresh this time, the ID of the speaker is six because it has created the speaker for me second time. So if I run the same test once again, so let's say do it again, it's going to go and delete the speaker for me and then it is going to create the speaker for me. So this deletion of the speaker is this time happening not from the API, rather it's happening from the, uh, from the database itself, which is this one, as you can see over here, right? So this is very, very important. So this is how 
it is happening at the moment. So the deletion of the product is happening from this fashion, which is pretty cool. So this is the way that we can do the database testing itself. So we don't really need an API for doing all these things. Rather, we can just use a database to perform this operation. And we can do the exact same thing for creation of an product or editing of the product, everything from the database itself. And I hope you got the idea already. And in the next lecture, we'll see how we can write one more scenario to perform the same kind of operation.